Our first question is from Sheila Pisey Allen. She is the executive director of TTC Riders, and her question to you is: Will you commit to increasing the TTC's operating subsidy to a dollar fifty per rider to fix overcrowding, lower fares for Toronto's 1.8 million daily transit riders? I will only say that the one thing that people can count on for me is that we will continue to invest uh, record amounts in the TTC throughout my term of office. Each year there has been a record, uh, as certainly in the last year for sure, and I think in the first year, record additional investment made in the TTC. The first year I was mayor, uh, I used that investment to restore, I think, 60 plus bus routes that had been cut by my predecessor. Subsequent to that, we've added trains to the Young Street Line to help with overcapacity. We've, had, we've added express bus routes all over the city. We have done all kinds of things that resulted in nothing other than a very significantly increased investment in the TTC, and in fact, this year for sure, and I think all the years I was mayor, a record investment. So I will be looking to expand transit service, uh, nothing else other than that. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and sort of now say that the budget is going to be X, Y, or Z. I, and, and part of it, uh, I would be looking to uh, help, get help as, as we have done from the other governments because I think that the kind of partnership we've had has immensely benefited the TTC. More on the capital side where, for example, we've bought 800 new buses thanks to some help from the uh, federal government. So the answer to the question is people can expect from me what they've seen in the first four years, which is increased investment. I think each time we increase it, it sets a new record, the subsidy that's given. And that has paid for things, by the way, not just the 800 buses. It's paid for kids travel 12 and under for free. It's paid for the first ever low income fare pass for people who have lower incomes in the city to travel on the TTC and significant increases in service, including, by the way, uh, to Wheeltrans, which again is getting substantially more and has reflected itself in substantially improved uh, service. So all of those things I think should expect to have a brighter future uh, because we're, that's what we're committed to doing. This is a really important question from Sheila, and it's such an important question for a couple of reasons. The first is that we've seen ridership flatline in the city, and we've also seen Mr. Tory break his promise. He was not going to raise fares. He did raise fares. We now have an incredibly expensive system. Uh, it's been raised over the course of the past four years from $133 for a Metro Pass to $148 for a Metro Pass, and yet, service levels have not been increasing. And the TTC riders have put out some excellent data that demonstrates that the most important thing that Torontonians want to see is an increase in service levels and better access to transit across the entire city. We're not going to get that if we're not building an excellent transit network in every corner of the city. We know that Mr. Tory wasted four years on Smart Track and that didn't materialize, it's had no impact. We have longer commutes on transit and longer commutes uh, in, a, in car. We've got more congestion than we've ever had in this city. And I see that as a lack of leadership. The transit is the answer to both getting people around and to traffic. The more people we can get to use transit, and that involves sticking with our transit plan too, by the way, moving forward with it and not changing it as others uh, have, uh, have suggested. This is a choice. We can make an excellent transit city where we're providing the funding that we need to deliver an excellent transit system, and that hasn't been happening over the course of the past four years. What we need to do moving forward is ensure that we have a clear strategy for growing ridership and ensuring that we're funding the ridership in this city in a way that will lead to a greener, more sustainable city. And this is an area where um, I think there's nothing more important than ensuring we're driving our growth through our transit. But at the flip side, we need to be providing that higher level of service that we're not providing today. And part of that involves working with higher levels of government and, and ensuring that we're getting the, the funding that we need. And I worked very closely with the federal government on the funding uh, that's a ridership based approach as to the opposed to the approach that uh, existed before. All right, and now my follow-up. How would you speed up the downtown relief line? Well, I'm so glad you asked this question because uh, I put a lot of thought into this and I've been working with a team of transportation experts to look at what's currently been proposed. So we're 
we're decades behind. Like we have to be clear about that. We have crazy overcrowding on the young line. And what we've basically done is looked at the current approach and identified where we can fold together tasks that we could be doing simultaneously instead of doing them one after another. So as we're doing station designs, we can start purchasing the land that we require for the alignment. We can do those tasks at the same time and shave three years off of that instead of losing time like Mr. Tory did because he was focused on, uh, on Smart Track. Well, it's very interesting. I mean, first of all, if you look at the record, the downtown relief line has probably been talked about for 30 years. The total, the total, because we've gone back and checked, and the total that every city council, every mayor before me has put into that was, was about one and a half million dollars. You could stretch it to four million if you wanted to be really generous. Under my leadership, we've gone and got $200 million from the other governments to do the real detailed planning and design work that indicate we're really serious about moving forward with this. And that work is being done. Uh, you know, the route has been chosen and then altered with public consultation, but it's now been finalized. Uh, we have planning and design work being done. We're taking soil samples. I asked the question of the chief planner of the day at a public meeting, and we could supply you with a videotape, is there anything that could be done? This is about six or eight months ago. Is there anything that could be done to speed up the relief line beyond what we're already doing? And the answer that came back was no. I ask that question every uh, quarter at a meeting I have with the transit officials in my office. Is there anything we could be doing to do this faster? And the answer that comes back is no. So I ask it all the time. So we're going to be proceeding ahead. And if anybody, by the way, answers and says there's things we can do to speed it up, I'll be implementing those. But we're proceeding full speed ahead, fastest of any administration ever, which previously did basically nothing to move it forward. They talked. They didn't act.